Annuals and small bedding plants are the perfect plant for any garden. They're usually easy to grow, they always give you a burst of color and a burst of green, and it really fills in all those empty spots that are usually left behind after the spring. Hey guys, Louie here. Welcome back to Acorn Hill and welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are having a good day and enjoying the spring that has already enveloped majority of the country and here in North Carolina we're pretty much getting into early summer with the temperatures rising and the precipitation and the amount of rain that we are having with our seasonal rains. Today I wanted to show you a new plant, a plant that I've been wanting to put in the garden and this is the year that we are placing them and we are going big time with it. These are sweet peas. Sweet peas belong to the family of, you guessed it, peas. They are annuals, which means they live for just one year and then they die back after they set seed. These are excellent plants to have because you can either get them and grow for the purpose of being structural plantings on top of wigwams or top of tripods, or they can usually become a semi ground cover when you have them lifted off about a foot on any garden bed. Today I'm sharing with you how I grew my sweet peas from seed, what to do with them once we transplant them in individual little pots as is the case of these little plastic cups and how we place them into the landscape. These plants that I'm showing you in these clips I planted back in the spring. I put two or three individual seeds in those plastic cups, watered them, allowed the water to really got soaked into the soil place them in a bright area and not in direct sunlight and after eight weeks they started sprouting and growing and that's from the start of spring. These plants are what's called climbers and they climb up any structure and so for the planting application in the landscape I am placing them in a pot filled with soil and I've placed a teepee or a wigwam where they will be climbing up on. As I mentioned earlier sweet peas are easy to grow and once the plants the seedlings have reached about four inches high what I'm doing is I am clipping pinching or cutting off all the growth points of the plants the idea here is to prevent the hormones from going all the way up in the beginning and allow offshoots or side growths to grow either from the base of the seedling or along each leaf node in essence what we're trying to do here is really get big bang for the buck of one seed and that is to continue getting it to bush out the more bush out it becomes, the more stems it will produce and later on as the season starts getting warmer, then we will have more and more blooms. As I'm showing you, this is one of the newer pots that I've initiated just a week ago and in 7 days I have all these growths, about 4.5 to 5 inches tall and this is going to be one of 5 individual pots that I turned into a teepee that will have vertical structure throughout the garden and will give us different colors. Some pots will have intense color mixes and some pots will have very pastel and salmon apricot colored ones which I think is one of the better ones out in the market right now and I'm excited to try it. One of the great things in gardening is perfect timing as to when each plant, each perennial, and any annual can fill in all those gap growth months, meaning there will be months in the year throughout the growing season where nothing is happening in the garden. And having annuals and having sweet peas not only will give you that burst of color, that pop of color in the garden, it will continue to provide a lot of colorful interest throughout. Now well, let me show you how I put and build one of these potted teepees or potted wigwams. I have this plastic resin pot that I've got. I painted it gray which is the universal color of all the, the pots that we will have in containers throughout the garden. I drilled the hole about three and a half inches high from the bottom. This is what's going to create a reservoir from the bottom. Through that hole, the drip hole, I am bringing in threading in a solid quarter inch black tubing and this will act as the water supply. What I'm doing in this video is I am attaching this one quarter black tubing into the main water supply that is embedded and hidden within the daylilies along the right side of the shot. I've cut this to an appropriate length because what I will do is attach a halo of brown polytubing all around um, that I will be placing on top of the soil level. What this does is number one, it is hidden away. The water supply is discreetly hidden. We have a live intermittent water supply 
to water this pot throughout the week. It's a smart system and a schedule in a way because we will have easy watering of these pots during those very hot weeks and months of the year. After threading through the water supply, it's time to fill the pot with compost. This batch of compost is still part of that 8 cubic yard organic compost that I ordered from the local supplier. It's handy to have and pretty economical in the big scheme of things. After the pot is filled up with soil, it's time to attach the brown quarter inch polytubing with holes that are distributed every six inches to the black polytubing. Alright, after that's been completed, it is now time to build the wigwam or the teepee that will be inserted and planted into the pot. I used bamboo canes in order to create and build this teepee. I used six pieces of six foot long bamboo stakes that I inserted into the pot. Here you can use any size piece of wood or bamboo or branches that you've cut from the tree. The six foot bamboo stakes are pretty much a standard and tall enough that we can have more blooms and more branches, more vines to climb up. We can always cut them up when they go to the top. But I think for a beginner garden and for a beginner project, a six foot tall wigwam or teepee is ideal. By the way, as I am tying all this up, check out the raised garden beds that I've made made out of the cedar fencing panels. They're about 16 inches high and really give me a good supply of vegetables. There will be a future vlog on our vegetable gardening and what we have cropped in this area in future vlogs. I'll also be putting on the description box of this video some of the building vlogs and videos that I have now made regarding this section of our garden. It's the reclamation project, building the garden bed. I call this a series under Acorn Hill Homegrown. It is all about us growing our own food and we're starting that out this year so I hope you check it out. I'll also be putting some cards and links on the screen so that you can easily refer to them as you go through this video. Alrighty, pot filled up with soil, drip irrigation in place, and the wigwam or teepee all assembled. It is time to plant the sweet pea seedlings. Now for all of us to remember, and this is a very important point, sweet peas are, should be grown in humus rich, fertile, well-drained soil in full sun or light dappled shade. The location on this spot with the wigwam is in direct full sun from uh, say 11 o'clock all the way out to um, 5 o'clock in the afternoon so it will get the ample sun that it needs. What I did here was incorporated well-rotted organic manure right on the bottom before I started planting. And planting in the seedlings couldn't be easier. All I did was remove the seedlings from the planting cup and I slowly dropped it into the hole. Those well-formed roots of these plants are now going to be the initial feeder roots so that all the organic manure that I placed on the bottom will be the first feed that they will get their little roots in and um, the soil all around it will not only protect it from the heat and the elements but also it will provide that well-balanced nutrition that it needs throughout the growing season. Remember that this is growing in organic compost as well. After planting all the starter seedlings into the ground, I water them all in. Now notice that the drainage on the soil and in this spot is very good. I made sure that the hole is big enough so that all that water will drain through and will just pretty much wash through the roots of the plants. They hate sitting in waterlogged areas and what's going to happen is they will immediately deteriorate with root rot and that's the reason why we made sure that the organic compost has enough and excellent drainage down the bottom of the pot. Sweet peas are vigorous growers with a lot of watering and regular feed of well-balanced fertilizer. These sweet peas will just shoot on up and to assist the sweet peas to really cling on to the wigwam and the teepee, what I'm doing here is I'm wrapping it around with bird netting. Not only will it provide all of those crevices and holes that the tendrils can cling onto, it also will accentuate and pretty much shape the teepee 
the vertical structure that we really created and from a distance this green haze adds a little bit more interest to a wide open area of this part of the property so this anchors this triangular garden beds this section in this corner after finishing this DIY garden project, what I did was weekly waterings of all-purpose liquid fertilizer. A type that is high nitrogen is pretty much preferred so that we could assist the green growth to really explode and have good growth, have good roots develop underneath the soil level. This clip was taken exactly on April 25 and I wanted to give you a before and after shots of this planting application. And here they are now. This pot that I'm showing you with a wigwam on it is one of three original pots that I planted back in April 25. This clip was recorded on June 9th and a month to a little bit over a month later what we have now is bushy growth, thick growth and a good base uh, being covered. The wigwam's base is being covered very well with all these tendrils, vigorous growth coming from the base of this pot really not bad for five weeks of growth. In terms of watering, I do it daily and I also feed them every other day with high nitrogen feed. I use liquid feed, that way it will be easier for them to uptake it in the beginning. With regular watering and feeding, the expectation here is to have showy and fragrant creamy pink flowers. Sometimes they will also have intense pink according to the packet, but they will appear in the summer and all the way through until the end of autumn. Sweet peas belong to the type of plants that I always refer to as plants that keep on giving. They don't need any pruning at all. What they need is regular deadheading because the more you deadhead, the more you cut the flowers, the more they will give back and according to uh, what I have read, they will also give back double once you deadhead them daily. I have five individual big pots with wigwams filled with sweet peas that I will give you updates on very soon. There is still time to sow and plant these seeds directly into any planting medium and so if I were you, I would go ahead and start considering sweet peas for this year. I appreciate your time joining me here today. I will be showing you flowers once these bloom and I hope that you enjoyed something new to learn from on today's video. Thanks again guys for liking and sharing our videos and giving comments on each video that we put out. We appreciate all your support and we ask that you consider subscribing to Acorn Hill. For now, this is your presenter and friend Louie, admiring the growth of these sweet peas, and we'll see you back here in Acorn Hill. Bye-bye for now.